Hello everyone. I hope you are watching the series in which we discuss about measuring instruments, different scientific measuring instruments, and you are having fun with science and watching all the videos. So you must be wondering which instruments are left now. We're done with thermometers, we're done with weighing scales, we're done with clocks and different uh, length measuring instruments. So yes, you must have got an idea by looking at these and we're going to learn and discuss more about instruments that measure volume. So it is a very uh, common instrument again and mostly used at different places and the most common that I see every day is uh, the measuring flasks used by milk vendors, right? Those are very common. Again, we use such uh, volume measuring cups while we are cooking. So, it is a very common uh, instrument to use. We also commonly say that uh, just add a cup of milk or a tablespoon of sugar and Yes, these all are volume measuring instruments, but not very precise and accurate. So there are more accurate and precise measuring devices than these. And uh, some of them are measuring cylinders, beakers, syringes, pipettes, pipettes, etc. But the most commonly used among all these is the measuring cylinder. And it has lines marked on it. These lines or each line mark is a division or graduation. But some lines of them are only marked. So some devices of these devices are more accurate and precise than the others because the graduations and divisions marked on these devices are more than the less precise devices. So let's start with this beaker. So in this beaker there are graduations of say 50, uh, 100, 150. So we can measure volumes of uh, like 50 milliliters, 100 milliliters, 150, 200 and so on. But now if we want to measure 170 milliliter of some liquid. So in this container, in this beaker 170 milliliters can be occupied. But there is no graduation or mark of 170 milliliters. So we cannot be accurate or precise that the liquid filled in it is 170 milliliters. So this is called the least count of that instrument. The smallest division of the instrument that we can measure precisely is the least count of that instrument. So beakers are not um, actually used or not prescribed to measure very precise amount of volumes. So now this measuring cylinder can precisely measure 5 milliliters. This buret is of 0 0.05 milliliters, uh, 0 0.01 milliliters pipette. Pipette is nothing but a dropper with markings on it. So now you can see such precisely measuring volume instruments exist. And so when we need to uh, measure 0 0.01 milliliters that is I think less than 5 to 10, 5 drops also we need such precise instruments. So now when we think about volume measurement only liquids come into our minds right but how do we measure the volume of solids? For example how do we measure the volume of this cube ball? What we just do is measure the length, breadth and height. And we multiply them to get the volume of this cuboid. Now if we have measured these lengths in meters, we say that the volume of this cuboid is so and so cubic meters. Length in meters, breadth and height in meters. Meter, meter, meter gives you cubic meter that is meter cube. So what about gases? Yes, there is a device called as eudiometer used to measure the change of volume of gas um, during or after a physical or chemical reaction. So gases are also measured in liters like liquids. Uh, there exists uh, one more unit but we don't use it much. It is called as gallons. 
uh, it is mostly used in US. So it is called one US gallon. It is approximately equal to 4.5 liters. So these were the measuring instruments with which volumes were measured. So there is one more method to measure the volume. It is called as the displacement method. So it was easy to find the volume of this cube ball. But how will you find the volume of this pencil or any irregular shape object? How will you find the length, breadth, height and uh, it is uh, sharpened at one end? So it is very difficult to do that. So what do we do? We take a measuring cylinder, fill water in it up to a known mark and then put this pencil inside the cylinder. So the volume of this pencil is going to displace the same amount of volume in that cylinder. Then we measure the change in volume. We knew the first volume of water and then after putting this pencil and then the change volume gives us the volume of this irregular shape object. So this is also done with gases and the change in the volume gives the volume of gas. So there is an interesting activity now again. Uh, this, this can prove whatever we have uh, seen right now. So uh, take any cube, cube or cubite object in your house. Um, Rubik's cube would be great. Measure its volume with the length, breadth and height multiplication method and then do it with the displacement method. Tally your answers, see if they are same. Please let me know in the comments below too. So now from this what we can learn is what is volume? It is nothing but actually the space occupied by that object. There is one more interesting fact about volumes. Um, compare or imagine 1 kg of steel ball and 1 kg of cotton or feathers. The masses are exactly same, 1 kg. Will the volumes of both this object be same? No, right? The volume or the space occupied by 1 kg cotton will be more than the space occupied by 1 kg steel ball. Why is it so? This is because the density of cotton is less than the density of steel or the steel ball. Now what is density and how will we measure it? We are going to see how, how do we measure density, what is density and different methods to measure density in the next episode. Please like, share and subscribe and do your activities. Have fun with science. Bye.